Now, if you have spoken or debated any Muslims before, you must have encountered their most common objections against the deity of our Lord and Savior, the King of Kings, Lord Jesus Christ. The same Muslims tend to repeat these common objections over and over, even when they are answered and refuted by Christian apologists already a thousands of times. Muslims are trained to do that and they don't care about the answer. But in this video, we will mention one of the most used objections against the deity of Christ and explain to you as a Christian how to deal with such an objection and learn how to refute it easily. One of those objections is about Jesus cursing the fig tree. Muslims tend to ask, why did Jesus curse the fig tree? And didn't Jesus know that it wasn't the right season for fruit on that fig tree? How is Jesus God if he did not know that there were no figs to be found yet on that tree? Especially when he approached it to eat from its fruit while he was hungry. Shouldn't he know better if he's supposedly all-knowing, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob? Hmm. Now here's how to address this objection and totally refute it. For starters, the fig tree is the symbol for the nation of Israel. Or, as the Quran calls them, the Bani Israel. In places like Jeremiah 8, Jeremiah 24 or Hosea 9, God himself repeatedly uses the image or symbol of a fig tree to refer to his chosen nation, i.e. the Israelites. And in every one of those cases, God refers to the fig tree or the fruit of the fig tree to make his point. So when Jesus approached the fig tree, it is a lot like Jesus approaching the Israelites and Jerusalem. It is important to know that it's not fig bearing season. Now see, figs have a very odd cycle. They start their spring growing season by producing a small crop of something called Breba or Taksh. It's an Aramaic word. It is a small pre-fig fruit that grows on the previous year's shoots. These tacks come about the same time as the leaves start to appear on the tree. Later, they fall off and are replaced by the actual delicious figs that you and I know. But if you approach a tree covered in leaves in the spring, you should be able to find a crop of these little knobby edible breba or tacks. In the time of Jesus, they used to be considered as peasant food or food for the poor. But remember, Jesus is coming from Beth Ani, the house of the poor. The problem is this. If you look at a fig tree in its early season and it doesn't have any of these Breba or Taksh on it, then it's a guarantee that it won't produce figs when the true growing season arrives. Those trees used to be cut down with an axe and replaced with fruitful ones. That's what John the Baptist was talking about back in Mark 3 when he said, Even now, the axe is laid to the root of these trees. The idea was really pretty simple. If you have a tree that doesn't produce fruit, you remove it to make room for one that actually does produce fruit. That's how you keep the grow of healthy and producing fruit. Now, when Jesus didn't find any Breba or Taksh, Jesus cursed the fruitless tree, causing it to wither and die. Jesus is now making room for a fruitful tree to be planted in its place. This tree has its season. It has borne fruit. It has fulfilled its purpose. Now, by withering it to the roots, the need for its replacement would become even more noticeable for the people who care for its growth. They will cut it down and replace it 
with a tree that actually bears fruits and brings life to everyone who encounters it to eat from it. Jesus' interaction with the fig tree is a picture of what is about to happen to Judaism as a whole. He's about to bring the era or the dispensation of law to fulfillment. It's had its season. It cannot bear fruit any longer. Now, when Jesus said to the fig tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again, Jesus here is opening the possibility of a new tree that bears fruit for everyone to eat. Paul makes it painfully clear in Romans 3, Romans 4 and Romans 7 that the law brings wrath and death because the law is only capable of exposing our shortcomings. But the season of the law has been fulfilled and now we live in the season with the dispensation of grace which brings life. Jesus spoke to the fig tree and said, May no one ever eat from you again. But just in a few days, he'll look at his apostles and say, This is my body. Take and eat all of you. The tree of death that he would experience has given away to the tree of life. The fruit of the law has been replaced with the bread of life. And in our Lord's house, there is bread enough and to spare. And that's, my friends, that's the way to refute these kind of silly objections of Muslims who have no idea what they are talking about. This proves that Muslims will die in their sins if they reject Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So please, Muslims, stop repeating these silly objections as parrots. Know that we already have refuted them many times over. Please, for the love of God, please stop. And come back home to your Lord and my Lord Jesus Christ. We don't want you to die in your sins. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press the like button and please share this very video all over social media. Thanks for watching again and God bless.